kick this off. So we're doing episode 12 of Toolbox Tuesdays today, everyone. What we'll be going through is our advanced prepayments extension for Business Central Cloud. For the agenda, we're going to start off by looking at the current gaps in out of the box Business Central, the solutions that ERP Connect provides to fill those gaps for advanced prepayments, and then Ben's going to hop into a live demo where he's going to show how to set prepayments at a customer vendor, sales purchasing document level, create and utilize prepayments associated to jobs, book prepayments to APAR and deferred revenue and expense accounts, use funds to pay orders invoices partially, and generate prepayment balance lines on a document. We'll follow that up with the next steps on how to get started with advanced prepayments, finish it up with the resources. And of course, we got that chat box working now. If you have any questions, please feel free to post those in the chat as we go through. So let's kick this off. Why are we all here right now? There are no out of the box prepayment functionalities in the customer or vendor cards in BC, along with the ability to do retainers or deposits for customers and vendors. There's no easy way to manage when prepayments need updates at an SOPO level or the invoice level as well. And there's no ability to manage prepayments on jobs. So this is why we're here, right? The solution is we want to make prepayments easy in Business Central. We're doing that by providing customer vendor prepayments, deposits, and retainers built natively into BC at the customer vendor level more flexibility when managing sales purchase orders as well as invoices for prepayments and we're also going to give the ability to view an ar dashboard for customer prepayments and a dashboard for vendor prepayments as well so what this leads us into and y'all know us by now we like to get right into it as soon as possible this leads us into a live demo where we'll be showing the setup as well as the functionalities of advanced prepayments. But without further ado, Ben, I'm gonna pass it off to you. <clears throat> awesome, thank you, Grant. And just to confirm, uh, <clears throat> can you see my Business Central uh, demo here up on the screen now? Yes, I can. And we already have a question, Ben. What about for project-jobs, question mark? Uh, yep, so those are the one of the three main functional areas that we're looking at um, today. I'm going to hyper-focus today on the sales side since most of the functionality, if not all the functionality, will pretty much be the same. So on the sales side, we can do prepayments at a customer level that kind of works as a, a retainer or deposit. Think of just you know getting $10,000, let's say, from your customer and then chipping away at that as you're posting sales orders or uh, sales invoices from a purchasing side, gonna work the same exact way, right? You might pay your vendor $10,000, and then as they're issuing you invoices and orders, again, it's gonna chip away at that um, kind of balance. We give more flexibility to the sales orders, sales invoices, purchase orders, and purchase invoices in terms of being able to book multiple prepayments at those uh, certain levels, uh, as well as changing line items, which is one big limitation that Business Central does not allow you to do today. And then we're gonna kind of extrapolate all that functionality into jobs as well. So right now you can't apply prepayments to jobs. We uh, have expanded the functionality and now allow you to associate prepayments to jobs. And then as, those, uh, as you're working with those jobs and payments are required, from your customers uh, for those jobs that can chip away uh, at those balances as well. So absolutely, um, we likely won't get into actually running through a job simulation, but I would highly encourage everyone at the end of this call to at least get our free trial um, downloaded into your demo instance. That way you can kind of play with these scenarios uh, for yourself. And if you're a partner, making sure that it works for your customers. And if you're a, an end user, making sure that it works for your requirements. So with that, if there's any other questions, please drop them in there. And again, our main focus for today is gonna to be on kind of the sales side, but it's gonna look exactly the same as we go over to the purchasing uh, and job side. So with that, I'm gonna start just with a quick review of what would need to be set up. And main purpose there is not only showing you what needs to be set up, but kind of how easy it is to set up. Our main goal with a lot of these tools is to get up and running very quickly uh, with some light configurations. There'll always be some configurations that need it, but we try to make it um, as easy as possible. So we're on the advanced prepayments management uh, setup. 
the first thing you'll need to do the first time you come in here is generate the demo key if you've downloaded it for the first time. Uh, once you're ready to buy, we'll provide that activation key, which will update your expiration date down here. All we need is this activation tenant ID. And then as we get into the setup, uh, it's pretty simple. So the general piece is just, do you want prepayments on? Which if you're using it, the answer is typically going to be yes. Uh, and then pick your sales prepayment and purchase prepayment uh, GL account number. So typically for sales prepayments, it's going to be some sort of balance sheet liability account. Uh, and then for your purchase prepayments, uh, it's typically going to be a, a balance sheet uh, asset account. So for this case, I've got our prepaid expenses and I put in here just so we can see that it's for advanced prepayments purchasing. And then down here for 20300, I've got a deferred service revenue um, in my liabilities there. So as we're posting uh, both the invoices and then also the applications for those prepayments, that's when the, the debits and credits to that 20300 account will come into play today. Again, as we're booking the invoices and it's kind of parking that on the balance sheet as deferred revenue before we can recognize it, at which point it will move it out of deferred revenue and into revenue. And then on the flip side, uh, if we were doing anything for vendors. So that's the first piece, just kind of uh, defining what GL accounts that you would like to use. And then down here on the uh, customer and sales uh, document setup, basically uh, a handful of different options here. So the first one is allow over prepay. One of the big things we see with out of box prepayments is, you know, somebody setting up a sales order, let's say, and right now they've got one item on it and they want to generate a prepayment document but all you can do is generate that for that thousand dollars if you toggle this on you can generate a prepayment amount for any amount on that sales order and it can be greater than the actual sales order is today now if you've issued that and someone has paid you and the sales order doesn't get up to be that amount let's say you issued it for five thousand when the invoice was only uh, or the sales order is only a thousand right now and you add a few items and maybe it gets up to four thousand that uh, that difference of a thousand when that final sales order uh, is shipped in invoice will be automatically booked as a credit memo so that you can use those funds for for later use to apply to different invoices or you can refund your customer if you need as well some of these line options if you're using um, sales orders just will define how that prepayment uh, document looks right so if we're issuing a prepayment again for five thousand dollars you can show the order lines that are associated with that sales order you can just show a summary line that says hey you know you owe us five thousand dollars you can put the uh, line items there either with uh, the item details and a summary or just show all the details as if you're printing an actual invoice with no summary of the um, actual prepayment there. So again, just some different options. If you're using the summary line, you will need to show what that summary line is gonna say. So if you hover over here, we have what those wild cards are gonna show. So it can show the order number, the work description, or the external document number, or all three in my case. For the invoice posting, let's say you have sales order one, two, three, four. If I use sales order number in sequence, it will do sales order SO1234-01-02-03. So it'll kind of append uh, in 010203 at the end of those prepayments in order to associate that prepayment to the original sales order to kind of keep those in sync and make it easy to view from a user standpoint. Or you can simply just use your number series, which would just use the you know standard, um, the number series that you have to find in your sales setup. Uh, check for prepaid paid. If you have this on, it's going to work exactly like the out of box function where it will not let you ship an invoice until the prepayment's been paid. We have the option to turn that off if you would like. Um, if you have this turned off, it'll allow you to ship an invoice prior to actually receiving the funds for your customer. And then uh, what we have over here is if you're using the customer level or vendor level prepayments. Uh, again, let's use that $10,000 example. My customer has paid me $10,000. Their first invoice goes out and it's only for $1,000. It's gonna take $1,000 out of their prepayment funds, kind of that retainer, and then on the line show them the amount remaining is now 9,000, right? <clears throat> so it kind of keeps a running tally for them to show, hey, you know, here are the prepayments that have been booked and your remaining balance now is 9,000. Uh, these last few are just some kind of defaults. So when the cash receipt is received, do you want to then release that document or uh, leave it open? Um, this is just the skip SO basis based on how your number series is. Typically, we recommend that you do not have any dashes in your number series because of the way we're going to append with this option, the 010203. Um, the default for prepay uh, exempt, we'll get into that, but you can exempt certain documents from using prepayment funds. So let's say you have that $10,000 prepayment, but somebody uh, 
issues an invoice and they don't want to use prepayment funds for that, we can turn that on. And again, these are just defaults when you create a new customer. Uh, those can be turned on or off uh, manually at the actual sales order level. And then the default for prepayment level, we've got it can default to sales orders, customers, jobs, um, or projects, which is another uh, projects is kind of our alternative module to the jobs module. So uh, different ways you can do there. The big thing to call out here is that for one specific customer, you can't combine both customer prepayments and act as a retainer and do sales orders. So this is just the default as you're creating new customers. But again, that can change customer by customer. And we'll go through both of those examples today. So don't want to spend a ton of time on the setup, but just kind of wanted to give you that general flow for a few minutes of what would need to be set up uh, and kind of show you how simple that is to do. On the vendor uh, and purchase order and job side, uh, it's very similar. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward. Again, the allow over prepays, the number series, uh, the defaults, things like that. And then on the jobs, just what do you want to put <clears throat> as the summary uh, line description there? So I'll pause for questions real quick as I transition into the actual demo, but I'm going to jump out of the setup for now and we're going to jump over to uh, our customer card to show you what the uh, setups there are needed. So Grant, let me know if there's any questions. Otherwise, I will jump right into this. Chat box is looking clean, Ben. <clears throat> awesome. And like I said, we're going to continue to focus on those customer deposits, uh, retainers, and sales orders. And ultimately, kind of the uh, the general guiding notion here is that it's going to give you more flexibility when using uh, prepayment. It's going to allow you to do the multiple prepayment invoices on one order, and then also be able to change the items that are on that order once the prepayment's posted all of which um, Business Central kind of lacks today uh, out of box, which is why we've created this tool. So we're going to start on our customer prepayment. So this is those retainers and those deposits, right? Uh, the only thing really here that's new is going to be this prepayment level and this prepay uh, exempt flag. So again, this is going to look very similar to the setup, sales order, customer job project. We're going to focus on um, the customer prepayments here. And again, if I tried to issue a prepayment at a sales order level, uh, this is kind of that safeguard to make sure that that's not happening. I'm going to leave the default as off because we don't want to exempt anything. We want to use all the prepayment funds uh, to the best of our abilities as we go through this today. So the first thing you'll need to do to book a prepayment is come up to process and the customer card. And again, these are those customer deposits and retainers. So we don't have a sales order or sales invoice. We don't even really know what this money is going to be used for yet. They're just prepaying us maybe to get a discount or again, like I always think of a law firm or a professional service uh, firm as kind of those retainers, right? So I'm going to come in here. And one of the first things that you'll notice is I've got some activity in here already, right? So I've done a prepayment invoice in the past. Uh, it was for $1,000. The remaining amount, this remaining amount is kind of looking at the customer ledger entry. So it's saying that that thousand dollars has been paid when looking for applications. That's when you'd look up here to look at the prepayment invoice amount remaining. So again, we've they've prepaid a thousand. All thousand has been used. We don't have any money left, so we'll have to create a new one. But if you were interested in seeing where those prepayments were applied historically, uh, you can come down to the application. So a hundred dollars was applied at invoice 103816. And another 900 was um, at 103,817, which again, full funds have been utilized. Let's create another prepayment here. So I'm going to do, uh, let's do $2,000 here. So all I have to do is say, hey, how much are we going to prepay or how much are our customers going to prepay? Um, the payment date and the due date, I'll just populate those real quick. If you have any dimension requirements, you can throw them in there. Uh, and then if you were to, uh, let's say, issue a $2,000 prepayment invoice and then they came back and said hey actually we only need a thousand dollars you can do prepayment credit memos here as well and that's where these applications would come into play so you could then you know if i accidentally did two thousand and needed it to only be a thousand i could just come in here and put in a thousand dollar credit memo uh, and apply it and all that fun stuff would work accordingly and you just post the prepayment credit here so with that i'm just going to post the prepayment invoice are you sure you want to post it i'm going to click yes and now we see that prepayment invoice here for two thousand dollars the remaining amount is two thousand because they haven't paid us yet and now you'll see that the prepayment invoiced amount for the total updates to three thousand so this is kind of the consider this the life to date for the customer right life to date they've paid us three thousand dollars in prepayments we have two thousand left that they can apply uh, to uh, sales documents so uh, I'm going to come into my cash receipt just to kind of close the loop here. Let's assume and uh, facilitate them paying us real quick. All right, I'll update that to customer. 
apply it here. Kind of running slow there for a second. Let's get over here. All right, and we're just going to apply that to our $2,000 there. Perfect. And I'm just going to post it. So nothing fancy there. That's just out of box. Uh, got a dimension requirement. Let's populate that real quick. Just out of box uh, cash applications here. So let's post that now that we got that dimension defined. And lines have been posted successfully. And if we jump back into our customer and do a quick refresh, we'll notice now that the remaining amount, again, pulling from the customer ledger entries, uh, is now zero. So now we can go ahead and start to utilize these prepayment funds on our sales orders. Again, these are the old applications. As we continue to go through this, we'll see how those new applications apply. So let's say they've paid us. Now we're ready to start creating some sales orders and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to come in here to our sales order. And let's just create a brand new one. I'm going to do two examples for this customer. The first one I'm going to apply, let's just do $200 and then it will show that uh, remaining balance. And then we can use the remainder of the funds on a, uh, on a second sales order. So we'll come in here, our toolbox Tuesday, customer prepayment account here. Um, these are some of the flags I talked about earlier. So we have the exempt. So again, if I turned this exemption flag on, it would just post like a normal sales order. It would not apply any prepayment funds because we're exempting it. The other option is to do a partial. So let's say this invoice was for $1,000 and I only wanted to use $500 of prepayment for some reason. I could put 500 in here and it would only use um, kind of a partial prepayment and leave the rest on AR for you. Um, and then you'd send it to your customer and they would owe you the difference. So let's come down here. On the second one, I'll do an item. For the first one, I'm just gonna do a GL account for Revenue, All right, so let's come down here to screen. Okay, there we go. Let's do product revenue for this one. We'll just do quantity of one and we'll do $200 like I mentioned. All right, perfect. So at this point, again, this is just your normal sales order, but because we have $2,000 at that customer card level, uh, it's going to basically make this invoice so that they don't owe us anything, right? It's going to take $200 out of that prepayment uh, deferred revenue account and then book it to revenue for us. So as we go through here, we'll go ahead and post this. Again, just like a normal sales order, I'm just going to ship an invoice, the whole thing. And then do you want to see that posted invoice? We'll go ahead and click yes. Awesome. So product revenue, it booked it to 41100. 20300, if you remember, that is our uh, deferred service revenue for the prepayments. So what this is doing basically is it's booking all the, the GL entries correctly to our, our revenue accounts. And then it's taking $200 out of our deferred revenue. And then as you can see, the posted invoice as a result, they don't owe us anything, right? And then the other cool thing down here is that the amount remaining is 1800. So it's showing not only did we take 200 out of the prepayments, but hey, you also have $1,800 left. So kind of just a nice thing that your customers can see as they're posting to say, oh, okay, hey, we still don't owe anything. They can book this um, if they're using advanced prepayments as well on their side, right? From a purchasing standpoint, and then everything else will uh, tie out. And if they're not, then they just need to book it however, that, however they would book it on um, their end. But from your standpoint, that's kind of the flow as we get started for those customer level prepayments. Now, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to show, you know, we only have $18, uh, $1,800 left. So let's post something that's greater than $1,800 and look at the result of that. So I'll come back in here and I'll do another sales order for our Toolbox Tuesday customer. All righty, so we've got that there. Again, I'm going to leave the exemption off if I turn that on. It just wouldn't apply anything. The last one, it would have just put $200 on accounts receivable for you, uh, and it would send them a $200 invoice. Uh, and again, that would be the partials there. Uh, this time, let's do an item. So I've got an item. This item should be $1,300. So let's sell two of these. Uh, 
That way we can get over our $1,800 that we have left. Got a pop up note coming from advanced notifications. Let's keep going through here. All right, location. We'll do that out of Dallas. And then we'll do two of these and we should have 1800 bucks left. So before I post this, uh, another thing that I'm going to show real quick, just because we have a balance, is our advanced prepayments AR dashboard. So this would show um, all of your customers how much they've been invoiced previously and how much prepayment they have left. So in this case, we can see, OK, uh, customer 6800 that we're going to be using here. Life to date, we've invoiced them uh, $3,000 and they have 1800 left uh, as their prepayment amount. So you can see that through the customer card or you can come directly in here and just see the balance just for kind of a quick view. So a nice another nice little reconciliation thing that you can look at there. Let's pop back in here. So again, we've got $1,800 left. This invoice is going to be for, or the sales order is going to be for $2,600. Let's go ahead and post this. All righty. So now all $1,800 is going to be uh, utilized in this case. And if we come down to our posted sales invoice, Here's what it's going to look like, right? So we've got the $2,600 that was on the original sales order sales invoice. They're taking $1,800 out of the um, prepayment kind of remaining balance, which puts our total prepayment now at zero. And we'll see that back on the customer card. And the way that the customer would read this invoice is, okay, it was $2,600. We had $1,800 left and our remaining balance now is $800. So $800 would go to uh, accounts receivable. And if I look at our find entries, we can see all of that uh, right in here. So kind of going into a, a deeper level, right? If I look at our GL entries, all of that is being accounted for um, correctly. So here we can see our AR, right? We're booking the $800 there. Uh, these should be my, these are my inventory accounts. We're taking that $1,800 out of our deferred uh, service revenue and then booking $2,600 to our sales account. So all of that is flowing through. Um, all that GL is being automatically uh, booked for you. And when it comes to the customer prepayments, we've kind of now gone through the full cycle there in terms of adding uh, funds at a customer level, using those funds both partially and fully on our sales orders. And then if I come back, we've already shown the dashboard at a high level, but if I come back to my customer card here and I go to our advanced prepayments, we can see um, we can see that same functionality. I see a, uh, a question from Colleen as well. Does this functionality work the same in sales invoices? The answer to that is yes, it's going to work exactly the same in both areas. All right, so if I come back up here to the advanced prepayments, this is kind of a hyper-focused dashboard just for this customer, right? So again, now we can see life to date. They've been invoiced 3000 They don't have any money left in the retainer. That combines worth of two prepayment invoices. We didn't do any credit memos. And now here are all four applications that we've done in the past. Additionally, if you needed to send this to your customer, uh, if they were interested, we've got this export customer summary. And what that's going to do uh, is essentially take all of this detail, put it in a nice little prepackaged uh, Excel document, and then uh, you could send that off to your customer if they had any questions about, hey, what's every you know prepayment invoice we've had? What's every application um, and all that good stuff? So let me grab this Excel document that looks like it's opening up here, uh, and then I'll pull it over to show you what that looks like. While we go through that, um, if there's any other questions about sales order or about uh, customers before we get into sales orders, please drop them uh, in the chat. We'll answer a few questions, and then we'll jump over to the um, over to the sales side of things. So just to show you that, here would be all of the different um, applications and invoices and all that kind of stuff that's been paid. I think looks like there were some other ones I did in testing previously. So those are probably um, still out there. So any other questions? How do we get a balance in if we are starting on a new system? So we've done this uh, a handful of times with customers over the last few months. Um, essentially, the, the easiest way to do it is to um, either clear out any of your old prepayments if possible or create credit memos for those old prepayments and then rebook them in advanced prepayments. Typically, what we recommend is starting with a new GL account for advanced prepayments specifically to make a super clean cutoff. That way, you know 
uh, that there's no balance left in your old prepayments, and then all of those prepayments have been moved to uh, advanced prepayments. That's that's going to be the easiest way to go about this. Uh, and then Deb, I see a question about um, having to jump and if this is going to be recorded. Absolutely, this will be recorded. Um, we always post to uh, our YouTube with our recordings, uh, and then we'll also post a LinkedIn announcement as well as a follow-up email. So absolutely, I know we're at the the half hour, we got about 15 minutes left, um, and I'm going to use those 15 minutes to go through our sales order example, unless there's any other questions right now. I see a few other people typing. Um, but while we while we look at those questions, again, basically the, the main things we're looking at here is posting those prepayment invoices, getting the cash receipts, and then creating your sales orders and sales invoices in order to use those funds. We have the exemptions, we have the uh, partial use, uh, and then also showing that remaining balance. Uh, see Rama, we have the, uh, can we also see this advanced prepayment for project type industry? So we do have that prepayment uh, at a job level as well at a project level for if uh, you have any clients using our project management tool. Uh, so the answer to that would be yes, just let us know uh, what you need and we can point you in the right direction there if you're using jobs or our project tool. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is on a order level and again, the big things here are going to be focused on the flexibility that you get for um, sales orders, both from doing changes on the sales orders after prepayment funds have been issued, as well as easily seeing that number series like we talked about earlier with the dash 01 dash 02 to relate prepayment invoices to um, sales orders and sales invoices that have been booked in the past. And again, all of this is going to work the same exact way on the purchasing side. Um, we also have uh, an advanced document numbering tool that does some similar functionality. So it, even if you don't need prepayments, but you had sales orders or purchase orders or any document where you have multiple shipments and invoices or multiple receipts and invoices, we have the ability to append that original sales order or purchase order number with, you know, shipment with the shipment, let's say. So, you know, if you have three shipments, dash 01, dash 02, dash 03, invoices, dash 01, 2, 3, 4, however many you have. And then as you're looking through your ledger entries in the future, you can easily see that those all originated from the same document number. Um, and if you are going to use that tool as well, again, we'd highly recommend that that base number you have has no dashes in it. Otherwise, then you'd have SO-1234-01. Um, what we'd recommend there is SO-1234 and then have the dashes 01, 02, 03 to kind of sequence it out. All right, I don't see any other questions at this time. So I'm going to jump into our customer card for our sales order level. So in this case, our prepayment level is going to be sales orders. If I try to come up here and do an advanced prepayment, um, it's just going to tell me, hey, you know, you're doing sales order prepayments for this customer. Uh, you can't, again, mix and match those. So that's kind of just a restriction that you have there if you ever see that. This is, again, the only setup that you'd need at your customer card. And you can also see that I have the default prepay exempt turned on. We'll see how that defaults. I'll likely turn it off uh, in the actual demo just because we want to see how those prepayments are applied. But again, just some different setups here that we'll use to get started with our customer um, order and invoice prepayments here. So let's go into a sales order specifically. I'm gonna come down here. We'll show the, uh, the over prepay and we'll also show how you can edit the documents, which again is one uh, big limitation that most people that are reaching out uh, to buy advanced prepayments typically call out. So I'll absolutely be showing that. So let's set up a order prepayment here. Again, you'll see that exempt flag turned on automatically based on my customer setup. Again, I'm just going to turn it off because we want to use those prepayments. Let's put in two items for this one um, and we can look at what our prepayment documents going to look like. We had some different options that we'll revisit at this point. All right, we've got our item pop up. All right, we'll do OK, we'll do item. Uh, keyboard first, and we'll do 1021. Now we'll do 1017, which is our surface. Right. Not make that a special order. Let's get rid of that real quick. All right. And we'll do Dallas, and we'll do. Let's do two of these. And we'll do Dallas again, and we'll do one of these. All right, so to get started, we've got $1,400 here um, on our sales order. 
at this point, I would go ahead and issue our prepayment. So again, on the sales order now, we have another button for advanced prepayments. I can go ahead and click advanced prepayments. And on the sales order, uh, we added something in for a percentage, right? So on the customer level, there's not a percentage of anything because there's no orders associated yet. But here you could do, you know, 100% prepayment. It's going to do, you know, 1400. It's going to automatically calculate, you know, 50% if you want 31%, right? You can put whatever you want in here. Um, or if you wanted to go over that amount, right? Maybe, maybe I do $2,000, right? To show the over prepay um, where then I can edit these sales documents going forward. So maybe the customer knows that this is gonna be a $10,000 order uh, and to get started, they just wanna do $2,000. So we can put that in there. Let me look back at my APM setup real quick. I can't remember what display option we used, but that'll come in handy as we actually look at the invoice. Um, so I've got summary line right now. Let's make it, let's make it a little bit more fun. Let's do, let's do order line. So this is actually going to show me, Hey, here's a prepayment for $2,000 and here's what you're going to be purchasing. So I'll do order lines there and let's post that. Awesome. So as you can see here, the first thing I've got that number series set up so that we're going to do the dash one. So this so this prepayment invoice number is literally the sales order number dash 01 because it's the first prepayment for this order. Um, another thing to point out is we can do multiple prepayments for um, this order. So you could add, you know, if they come back and they want to prepay another $2,000, you can absolutely do that. And if I actually look at what this prepayment invoice uh, is going to look like, I can just simply click on the, uh, the hyperlink here. And this is just what went out to... Um, our customers. So they owe us $2,000 on prepayment. And then based on the option that I selected, the uh, prepayment is just going to say, hey, sales order, you know, 1090 prepayment for the following prepayment for a keyboard and a Surface 8. It's not going to include any of the details here. If you wanted the details, uh, if we go back up to the APM setup, if you want the details, we have two other options for that where we'll actually show the quantities as well as the amount. So those options would be the uh, lines with item detail, no summary, or lines with item details and summary, if you wanted to see the uh, quantities and the actual amount. So just four different options there that you can choose from. So now that we have our uh, prepayment posted, let's go ahead and again, just do a quick cash receipt so that we can have the funds in order to uh, actually apply here, kind of keep it in the sync of what would normally happen, right? You'd normally issue that prepayment invoice, they'd usually pay you and then you'd start doing the work. But again, we do have the option um, that you could start uh, issuing um, before they've paid this. And then as they pay it, it'll just book it to your deferred revenue. So we'll come in there. Won't miss that employee code this time. So we've got that. And let's go ahead and post this. All right, perfect. So very similar to our um, our customer level prepayments, right? So we've got how much has been invoiced previously, uh, how much do we have left? So the remaining amount zero, we've paid that with a cash receipt or they've paid us with cash receipt. And we have $2,000 still left to apply um, to this sales order, right? And this is just showing the original amount. So we can see that we've issued more uh, prepayment funds than um, they've had, but that was on purpose, right? We're gonna go ahead and add some additional lines. So because of the way we had it set up, we said, hey, release this uh, upon receipt of the prepayment. I'm just going to come up here and reopen the document so that I can make some changes to the lines. This is one thing that you will not find um, in out of box business central, right? So you can mix and match. I can do GL lines if I want. I'm going to come in here and do uh, revenue, let's say. So already we're seeing some some new features to advanced prepayments that uh, wouldn't be available in the base product. why that's not pulling down let's go find it product there it is product revenue and i'm going to do one unit for again let's just do 600 dollars to get up to our 2000 but now you can see adding lines you can also take away lines so maybe maybe they don't need this keyboard anymore right um that prepayment isn't specific to the lines which makes it very easy to now change these lines right so now i've got uh, 1300 from that first line, 600, maybe let's just make it 700 to do an even 2000. But again, if, if it ended up only being 1900, it would automatically create a credit memo for that, um, 
for that final $100 that you could either refund them or use for uh, later invoices. So with that, that goes through um, adding the prepayment, the cash receipt, using it on a sales order, um, doing the partials, and then also um, changing the document, which is a huge, uh, a huge win there. So let's go ahead and post this. I'm gonna go ahead and ship and invoice that. And we'll go ahead and take a look at our sales order. Awesome. So just like you saw with the um, the actual customer retainer style prepayments, we've now got our uh, surface that was 1300. We've got our product revenue that was 700. And then it is uh, taking $2,000 out of our deferred revenue account. And again, they don't owe us anything because now this has been kind of fully paid. The other thing to note as well is if you had maybe, let's say, 20, a quantity of 20 uh, on there, you could uh, ship 10, let's say, and then later kind of run that ship and invoice process to kind of clear everything out, uh, get everything else invoiced or do uh, partial shipments and then partial invoices. The only requirement there is that anytime you're invoicing, uh, you do have to use the ship and invoice button just so that it will trigger. Uh, if you don't actually want to ship anything, just put zero in the, uh, the ship amount and then everything will kind of calculate correctly. But this makes it very easy not only to change things on the document originally, but after making those changes, do partial shipments, partial invoices. And then again, uh, it pairs up nicely with that advanced document numbering tool that we have. If you're looking to get that dash 010203 for your partial invoices uh, and partial shipments as we go through the, uh, the sales orders. I see one question in there that I'll answer here um, in a second, but taking everything that we've learned today so far on customers and sales orders, you can now literally extrapolate that over to uh, your vendor side, it's going to be a one for one. You'd open up the vendor card, you know, put a prepayment amount on the vendor that would book a vendor retainer. You can do the same thing on purchase orders where, you know, you're changing purchase order lines, but you've already issued uh, certain prepayment funds for those vendors. And then again, similarly on jobs and projects, associating prepayments to those jobs and projects. So the next question is, is it possible to set up uh, phases of prepayments 25, 25, 25, 25? Uh, yes, um, you can do that both on well, if it's a percentage, it would have to be on the, the sales order level, but you can post as many prepayments um, as you'd like on a on a bigger sales order, let's say. So if I came back here and went to, uh, let's pull up that customer again, I could come out here. I'm not gonna uh, exempt it. Maybe we're selling them you know, 100 of these uh, and we're gonna be doing a bunch of partials, right? I could come out here and we'll just set up the same exact way. Do a hundred this time. I don't have a hundred available, but that's okay. Um, so now we have $130,000 and you could literally come up here to the advanced prepayments and you could create, um, you could just create four prepayments off the bat if you knew when all of them uh, were due. If you're not using prepayments, we also have a payment plan tool that if you're posting like let's say you just shipped and invoiced all 100 of these and they've been shipped and invoiced, but you wanted to split their payment out into a payment plan where they're doing 25 this month, 25 next month, 25 the month after, and 25 in the final month. Um, we have a tool automatically to do that. It kind of plays into the payment terms and allows you to kind of create um, payment schedules. But here it'd be as simple as just coming up here doing 25%. Uh, you can, you know, maybe change the document date or the due date, depending on when you want that 25% to be due, but you would just post all of these prepayment invoices. Um, and then again, if something changes in the future, you can update the lines as well as uh, issue prepayment credit memos if needed to, to kind of clear those out. So good question. Any other questions related to the sales order prepayments or customer level prepayments that we've gone through? Um, Today, I think I've hit on everything I wanted to talk about so far, Grant, but uh, really kind of, again, just reiterating the flexibility here that we have with the prepayments, adding new functionality in for jobs, projects, and then also the, the retainers, and then really just making it easier to use prepayments in the system so that one prepayment isn't always kind of locked into one sales order and locking down those changes as well, right? So again, the flexibility is the, one of the biggest things that you're, you're benefiting from here, as well as just all the other visuals that we saw as well, like the, the dashboards and just easier things to keep track of how much money people actually have left, and then also displaying that on their actual documents as well.
All right, Grant, I'm going to flip this back here. Uh, where's the button? There we go. All righty. So that concludes the, the live demo. Grant, I'll let you take it home with the next steps. And while you do that, I'll continue to, to monitor the questions in the chat box. Yeah, that sounds good, Ben. So for everyone on the call, before we talk about the next steps, uh, if everyone could go to the React button in Microsoft Teams, uh, if you learned something new today or found something interesting for your business or for a client, throw an emoji out there. Let's see if anyone got some good stuff from this presentation. All right, we got some hearts, we got some thumbs up. Awesome, Ben gave a heart too. Ben, you learned something new, that's also sweet. All right, <laughs> cool. So let's, uh, let's finish this one off, everyone. If you saw something that you found beneficial, you can download a free trial. So if you're a partner, you can download that to your demo environment. If you're a user, you can download to one of your sandboxes. If you need any help with the download process, you can watch our activation video as well, but basically just go to App Source, download our extension, go to the setup page and click generate demo key button. I've also put the App Source download in the chat, along with the user setup guide for advanced prepayments and registration for our next Toolbox Tuesday for advanced CRM happening on February 6th. So now that we've talked about the next steps, let's jump over to our resources. We have a comprehensive product page with all of our pricing, bundles, and extensions that we offer. Everything is also on AppSource as well with summaries, screenshots, and user setup guides. We have a YouTube channel where we will be posting this recording along with all of our video walkthroughs and demos that we have, including for advanced prepayments. And we have a product guide that shows a fit gap for all 27 of our other extensions that we currently have available in North America. With that, we'll finish off there. It looks like we might have one more question that came from Svetlana, Ben. Yep. And then if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to post them right now. Yep, so looks like a uh, question is, could you please explain the message from the customer card, customer set to prepayment level other than customer, this option is restricted. So that's what I talked about when you're in the customer card, you're kind of selecting what types of prepayments that you'd like to use for uh, that customer, again, for the vendor, if you're on the vendor side, but um, you'd be getting that error message if the customer was set to do sales order prepayments and you tried to book a, a customer uh, prepayment or retainer or deposit at the customer card. So if you look down at your prepayment options on that customer and you're getting that message, my uh, guess would be that uh, that the prepayment is set to sales order and you're trying to post a, a customer prepayment. So great question. All right, Ben, it looks like we have nothing else in the chat box. Everyone, this has been episode 12. And we'll send a follow up email with the recording and everything you need Post it on YouTube. We'll be all set. Hope everyone has an awesome rest of their week. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye.